my last upload was 2019 and I haven't made a video since then. So, hi! And my microbanks is also waving at you. Hello everybody, my name is Maria and welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, I put all of my past videos in private just because I find it cringy. So this would be the first ever official video on this channel. Um, I'm just super duper excited for today because I am going to be doing a sit down, um, talky video to, with you guys because I am going to be sharing my um, full Life, my personal testimony um, from ever since I was a child up till now and I'm very very excited to be sharing with you like what has happened over the past years and just my life and what or where I am now in terms of like with my walk with God and I'm just super duper excited to be sharing with you guys and since this is going to be a long video and a very talky video I decided to also munch on some popcorn which is a barbecue flavor and also if I do get thirsty I do have here some water with me with the accent but anyways without further ado let's just go ahead and get started so actually I already did my personal testimony in my mom's podcast episode it was a two-part special um I did actually told you guys there what um, I went through and also bits and pieces of my testimony but I wanted to it to be in detail I think today I am just more than prepared to also share to you guys what has been happening and also what is currently happening and what stage I am at this moment so let's start off with my childhood first so I pretty much have a good childhood. Um, I have a happy home. I have this picture perfect family. I feel like we were this uh, perfect family, this ideal family that everyone would want to have complete and um, just happy and very joyful. So I was also known to be the joy of the family. So it's also they say that I'm the funniest, but also at the other end of the stick. I was known to be the maldita, the mataray, the sublata kid that uh, nobody would want to be around with. You know, if ako lang, I don't want to be around that certain type of person. I was very disobedient with my parents, um, most especially with a mama. I was a type of kid that was prideful. I was a type that doesn't want to listen, um, very um, has her own way. Of um, living, I have discipline, basically. So, so that's who I was as a kid, and what I was known for here in this house. And I was raised in a Christian household. My mom is a Christian, and so um, she taught us um, Christian values and what's right from wrong. He, and also the first book they actually read, um, based on recollection was the children's bible so i do know of um, the seven day creation i do know of jesus that he loves us and that he died for us and that he raised he was raised in on the third day that was just um surface level knowledge um okay jesus and was that i know that he loves me and that he's there for me and that he cares for me and all and I also do know the ten commandments i do know that i should be respectful and kind and just those values were instilled to us ever since we were young and so i was also mm, raised in church growing up i always attend church every sunday and i thought that every time i attend church i'm like such a good person and I also thought that, that going to church would save me and that going to church was also the way to get closer to God and also I was known for when I was younger you know I, I know in, in myself I know in myself that I was a sexual kid there was something in me that is very intrigued when it comes to kissing scenes and just I don't know i was just very sexual i just have that um in me and also when i was younger i would say that now i am very grateful that my parents did raise us well and also my parents didn't um lack 
in anything. Like, we were provided for and we have enough. I mean, we're not the richest family. We are not class A, but I would say that even if we're middle class citizens, they didn't lack in providing for us. And at that time when I was younger, I would admit that I wasn't that grateful for what we have because I was a kid who wanted more and more and more that it's over the budget. And I, ha I always have this um, facade in me that I'm way richer than what you think I am, than what you think I actually am. So, yeah, I was just the brand, brand conscious, you know? And also, I was also, I actually regret that I didn't do well much in the academic um, category because I took things for granted. I didn't realize I was very insensitive when it comes to my parents. They be, they've been working hard to get us to a good school but then here i am just being you know i i'm just here not appreciating how they worked hard for us to get to a good school and for me just being lazy and not doing well in the academic um scene so that is basically my childhood and also during church services i only enjoy worshiping and like singing to the lord and then just don't listen to the service and then i get excited after service because we are going to be eating out for lunch or dinner so that's like the background i just want to lay it down there because it's just going to stem from there and then we're gonna go i was enrolled in a catholic school um, ever since i was in grade school up till junior high school and so, of course, it's a Catholic school. Um, they teach about Jesus. Um, so, like, my knowledge of Jesus just became more and more. Um, I just had more knowledge about Jesus, especially growing up in a Catholic school. But also, there were, like, other beliefs in Catholicism that I didn't believe in. Because I not believe in, but I didn't do, like, praying to Mama Mary and just stuff like that. So, um, also, I had a pretty much great experience in that Catholic school. I had great friends and all. And I would want to say that I started getting insecure during third grade. And that's because growing up, I was very, very thin. I mean, up till now, I'm still very thin. But before, I was just very thin, like a walking stick and stuff, like a walking ball stick, basically. So because of that, and both my parents are very thin, and I also have a very fast metabolism, and I do not have a great relationship with food before. I don't know, like I cannot fit a lot in my stomach before. So I'm in that category where I was in... Uh, yeah undernourished category almost malnutrition actually so i was very insecure with my body figure and also with my hair i hated my hair so much ever since i was young because i have this like very wavy hair that i wanted it to just cooperate whenever i just brush it or something but then it's always fly away so that started my insecurity started from there and then fifth grade came and fifth grade was a very fun time to be honest because um that was the year that i also met my best friend up to this day which is Zena. i love you so much so fifth grade was amazing even though those insecurities are still there people still tease me about um how thin i was and stuff but that didn't really affect me that much because I don't know, that does not affect me, but some person, <laughs> this person um, pointed out something that I didn't realize up until he, that person pointed it out. So this person keeps teasing my long face, and which I do, I actually do admit, that I was Subamon and I didn't even know that word up until I search about it or just ask about it. What is Subamon? It is the Visaya of like, like long chin long face 
uh, this person keeps calling me Babalu and just be laughing and I didn't realize it and then I, I looked in the mirror and I was like oh my gosh I do have a long face and so that was another insecurity of mine and oh my goodness yeah and now my hair was very messy at that time also that I always put it up in a ponytail I always put it up in a ponytail but then my baby hair strands were like telephone wires telephone wires which were very curly and so I got very insecure at that time um I really thought that I was ugly because I don't know ever since I was young I was seeking already for validation from other people and I was always looked at as someone who's just funny and someone who's just um but it and all which i i love that um compliment but i also wanted a val validation from people that i am beautiful and stuff like that and not just my family saying that to me i also wanted other people to say that to me you know like words of affirmation i was in fifth grade this person's younger sibling um he'd be playing every dismissal time and stuff like that until this younger sibling of this person also joined the bullying and the teasing of my chin like babalu babalu and all that stuff so it took a toll on me um i didn't show it to them that i got affected but of course i really did um kinim kim ko talaga that i had a long face and long chin and i'm not beautiful and all those things like how how they uh, let me believe in those lies but you know I'm fearfully and wonderfully made like I just did not realize that in that time and then sixth grade came and um, I was classmates still with Dana and then um, that was a time where I wanted to fit in a certain crowd that I wanted to please like specific people in my batch that I would want to be part of their circle because I find them cool and maybe I might get popular and more popular and more known in school but also that was also the year where I wanted to get homeschooled where I wanted to get homeschooled because first of the bullying well I have to admit I also do tease my friends but not to the point of like bullying them and like just harming them like we do tease each other of course that's normal but like the bullying really did um something that um triggered that triggered me to want to go homeschooling and also at the same time i wanted to become a youtuber at that time ever since i was in grade school i wanted to become a youtuber and so i wasn't that comfortable to be um making videos and me being in a face-to-face -face class with people that might judge me and might judge my content and might judge me like making videos on youtube so sixth grade came and yeah that was that now let's jump to um junior high school but first water first water break now junior high school i was again enrolled in that same school um, I didn't get homeschooled. My mom just, I wasn't that honest, especially with mom, when it comes to why I wanted to get homeschooled. You know, I was just not fully honest and I'm so a YouTuber and that, you know, the bullying took a toll on me and it affected me. So that's why I had no choice, you know, but to just stay in the middle so grade seven was actually a great year and actually junior high school and my whole junior high school life was amazing but there were ups and downs as well so grade seven to grade eight i think that was like the period where i had where i got baptized in water so i did this one-to-one -one discipleship um to chusa church which is victory and with my mentor is uh, um, at the Ruth Kando, I miss you so much, Ada. So she helped me, and she um, we had these sessions, one to one sessions, um, for me to um, go to Victory Weekend. And I really thought that 
at that time I got closer to the Lord and which I know that that was true in a sense and after getting baptized in water I was like oh my gosh so renewed and refreshed like I'm saved oh my goodness by grace through faith I'm saved but um, I actually, <laughs> my lifestyle actually got worse and I rebelled and I was still a lukewarm Christian. And so, you know, being lukewarm, God really doesn't like that. It wasn't my priority before. I don't know when I even prioritized Him in the past, like pre illness, sickness vibe. But, like, He was just like, Hey Jesus, I can do this on my own, like just be there, uh, you are in my heart, I love you, but I love um, more things in you. So just stay there, I will go to you, and I will pray whenever I just want or need something. Like that's that's our, our relationship, and I think that was just very sad for me also. Bullying was more evident in junior high school, and also at in grade 7 to grade 8, that was also the time where my parents separated. And you know, a picture perfect family that I told you guys a, um, a while ago in terms of my childhood, it came crashing down. It's like the picture perfect family that I said a while ago, like it just came crashing down, like what happened wrong and stuff like that and just after knowing the things why they separated and stuff like that which i'm not going in detail with that i thought it won't take a toll on me i thought it wouldn't affect me then it led to unforgiveness bitterness resentment anger like what the fudge is happening man like what is happening like I thought I was in this um, family that has no problems. I mean, we have problems, but not as much as this. And like, I, I started blaming people. I started blaming my parents. Like, why did you marry in the first place? Like, why did you make us in the first place? And then just give this burden to us. Like, why? Blah, blah, blah. blah, blah. And then, so that's another reason, I guess, why I was kind of like drifting or um, drifting away from god but i know like jesus is real and he is still here and i just i have this relationship with the lord it never went away but it was just starting to i get i got more lukewarm and lukewarm and then third or fourth quarter of grade eight came and that was the time when i started to iron my hair you know as if it would do something new um also I started ironing my hair because, as I told you guys a while ago, I always had my hair up because my hair was very messy and wavy. And I do not want my whole face to be exposed because then, you know, my suang and just all of those things, my insecurities will be just out in the open. I always have a hanky with me and also I, to cover like my lower, the lower um, area of my face. And I started ironing my hair so that, you know, at least the sides, uh, my side profile would, um, like, would just be hidden or I don't know. But I think it didn't do anything. I didn't do, I think it didn't do as much as I thought that it would. Um, so yeah, I just started ironing my hair. I just thought I was prettier just having my hair down. And also, that was also the time where Dana invited me to join track and field varsity and I was like well, yeah for sure that's another venture that I would want to be part in so um, we became track and field varsities and um, it was just a fun time being there as well so a new space and a new distraction or something like that and then ninth grade came ninth grade to tenth grade like all out i was curling my hair ironing my hair putting on makeup in my face just like my uniform they'd be altered so that it would be as fitting as it can be and you know how catholic schools could be a very conservative um when it comes to those things and uh, so yeah i just didn't care anymore because i was just very insecure and i have this like I remember the time of me feeling 
like as if if you're like a victim of bullying you know and it affected you you feel like people in the corridors whenever you're walking by maybe even if it's not about you that they're talking about but it feels like as if you're the one being talked about and you're the one that they're laughing about that they're laughing on so um, I have this like specific group of boys in 10th grade when I was in 9th grade that, that I was very insecure when I walk or para pag nakasalubong ko sila um, anywhere. I just try my best to reroute <laughs> and just not, I don't want to see them because I feel like I'm being judged and being bullied by them even though i don't have the evidence but i just feel that way and also ninth grade was a time where i was very judgmental towards other people most especially with my friends i condemned some of their actions like i really thought that i was being self-righteous to the point that i didn't even realize what i was doing was also wrong uh, I wasn't even perfect and I wasn't perfect and who am I to judge them with what were they were doing at that time because I know that underage drinking is not good I know that smoking is great I know that cutting classes is not uh, is not very good and you know all these premarital relationships it, it's not good you know just seeing like uh, people around me doing all these things um, I thought it wasn't cool but at the same time those those were the people that I would want to be part of. like I would want to be part of those people just I do not want to compromise what my beliefs were it's very condemning it reminded me of that this verse that before removing a speck out of your friend's eye make sure to remove the log out of your eye first make sure to look at yourself first correct yourself first and correct your ways first before correcting other people i mean it's okay to correct people you know but i think i shouldn't just be as condemning and i shouldn't be condemning at all because in the end all of us are sinners and we do sin and also ninth grade was a time where my classmates um, do tease me still about my chin and all and I thought really that curling my hair or straightening my hair would do its work and then um, applying makeup so I just got more and more depressed and there was this time where my moderator asked me why I was putting on makeup and all these things and um, I told her it's because, I don't know, I, I'm just insecure, I feel ugly, and I told her that. And my mom actually re um, made me remember this. I actually forgot about it, but this is very crucial to my um, testimony because there was like this whiteboard in the office area, many office area at the back of her house, that um, at the back area, of our house where i wrote down with a permanent marker that i'm ugly nobody loves me um it's better off that i'm dead um i'm so ugly like nobody loves me i'm not good enough and all those things like i am just really this self-esteem my self-esteem my self-confidence just got very very low point that I really got depressed just all these things shuffling through my mind all these lies and attacks of the enemy you know but I d did believe in those things um so they were kind of like very they were um alarmed my identity my other sister and my mom went to the guidance counselor in school and told them that I wrote that down and so that's why but I was being called to the guidance counselor um, office uh, for them to talk about me uh, to talk about me, to talk to me and just you know taking care of me and they've been such a great help you know 
in my processing part in terms of bullying. And also I remember this uh, time after Fiesta dismissal um, on the first day of the Fiesta from grade nine, where it, um, I was tasked to talk about my trip to Europe um, in track and field to a grade school students to specific sections. And they were gathered at this audio visual room in the grade school area. And so I was waiting there and they were lining up and the same younger sibling just be calling me names and his um, other Bercada. And so like, they'd be laughing at you or something. So they laugh, you know, and it's even boys. And that's what hurt me more. That hurt me more because I was seeking validation in men, most especially. I was seeking validation in all. Um, both men and women, but I was seeking validation more in men because um, I never felt the feeling of being wanted or being liked by someone. Some crushy, like my crush likes me back, like I never experienced that. And even in the crowd of people that I want to be part with and my friends, they have like people that like them, people that do have a crush on them, and they have their own partners. And while I was in that group of people, I just do not have a significant other, which made me insecure and just this pressure that I, it was very hard on myself that I need someone also. I also wanted a boyfriend in that area in that time. And then so going back to that um, younger sibling of this person, if, uh, while waiting, I had an anxiety attack and I went to the CR, the nearest comfort room and looked at my and stared at myself and I was about to cry and I was like, I really am ugly, I guess. And I told my coach I cannot um, talk even to grade school students because I just have this anxiety and I was just very ashamed of my physical appearance and all. But then in the end, it did, uh, it, it went well, it went smoothly. And I did get to talk to them without, you know, being bullied. And so I think that was the starting point of me visiting to, that was a pivotal moment um, of me getting diagnosed and just visiting the psychiatrist and there I was diagnosed with clinical depression, with major depression and at first I wasn't even honest with my